friendship is one of the distinguishing glories of man. From this, I expect to receive the chief happiness of my future life, John Adams. As we progress through our Presidential Park series, one of our defining goals, besides to connect the presidents with the NPS, of course, will be to look at what our presidents have left behind to the country to remember. With George Washington, many precedents were set that still remain to this day, the president choosing a cabinet, being commander-in-chief of the military. His successor, however, would have a bit more trouble than Washington when it came to helming the nation's top office. This is the story of a man that diplomatically fought for independence, and then had to fight to keep it. This is the story of John Adams. While Washington was born in the southern colony of Virginia, Adams was born in 1735 in the New England colony of Massachusetts. After finishing his studies at local schools in the area, he attended Harvard College and graduated in 1755. Following graduation, he was briefly a teacher before finally settling on a law-oriented job. It was also around this time that he became interested in a lady by the name of Abigail Smith, and so in 1764, after working to keep up the farm he inherited from his father, he married Abigail and would live on the property that would come to be known as Braintree for many years to come. John would truly begin his rise to fame, however, in the years directly preceding the Revolutionary War. While he defended the British officers who were famously accused of murdering citizens in the Boston Massacre of 1770, he eventually became opposed to the laws set forth by Britain on the American colonies, and was elected to be a part of the First Continental Congress in 1774. Quickly following the First Congress came the Second Continental Congress, in which John helped take part in the creation of the Declaration of Independence for the United States, and gave the idea to put George Washington in command of the newly formed Continental Army. Following this convention, Adams would take a short stint away from politics before being dragged back in, this time as a diplomat. Adams traveled abroad to Europe where he and Benjamin Franklin worked throughout the Revolutionary War to get other nations in support of their cause. John was responsible for signing the Treaty of Paris in 1783, which effectively ended the war and saw the United States gain sovereignty as a nation, and remained in Europe for most of the decade, missing out on the Constitutional Convention and only returning to America in 1788. When it came time to elect the nation's first president, George Washington of course was asked to step up and take the spot. But Adams was seen as a good choice for vice president due to his good foreign relations with nations across the sea. After Washington's eight years as president, it was time for America's first true election. Washington's elections had been largely unanimous towards him, but with George out of the picture, John chose to run. His opponent was Thomas Jefferson, and after a fierce election, Adams came up on top. The Adams presidency saw the official residence of the nation's top leader being used for the first time, the White House. Originally known as the Executive Mansion and finished in 1800, the White House is located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and has hosted every president from John Adams onward. It was not until 1933, however, when Franklin Roosevelt incorporated all of the parks in the U.S. Capitol area under the jurisdiction of the National Park Service, which included the White House, known collectively today in the NPS, along with Lafayette Park and the Ellipse, as the President's Park. While Washington's presidency was focused more on internal affairs and the ensurement of stability within the nation, Adams' presidency was largely influenced by foreign affairs. Following the American Revolution, there had been tension and unrest in France. By the end of the 1780s, the tension had reached a boiling point, and soon, a revolution was at hand. The United States was torn between whether to support or stay neutral in France's endeavors. Washington had stayed out of the affair, and John Adams was also hesitant to show support for France. But France got impatient and started attacking American ships, which didn't end until an event known as the XYZ Affair, a bribe paid by the Americans to stop the attack. Adams also signed into law a series of acts that limited speech against the government and tighter control over immigrants, known as the Alien and Sedition Acts. While Adams did not create these acts, his image was tarnished because of them. And thus, by the time the election of 1800 rolled around, John Adams was not in a good position to win a second term as president, and lost to Thomas Jefferson, the subject of the next video in our series. Following the presidency, Adams returned home to Massachusetts, where he would spend most of his final days. This home is actually one of the best places to learn about Adams and his son John Quincy Adams to be talked about in the future. Commemorated as Adams National Historical Park, it is located south of Boston, and is home to John Adams and John Quincy Adams residences. It tells the story of how John the Elder contributed to the formation of the country, as well as what his life at home was like. John Adams passed away on July 4, 1826, the 50th anniversary of the formation of the nation, a fitting end to such an influential leader. Several counties across the U.S. are named in his honor, and his legacy will not soon be forgotten by the National Park Service, or the nation. And with that, we have come to the end of another video in RAC's Presidential Park series. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.